From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Atkins at Northwest Indemnity. Oh, hiya, Georgie. How'd you like to go to New York, Johnny, and get into the game mad world of the theater? Thanks a lot, Georgie, but no thanks. I'm not the grease paint type. I know, but Amy Bradshaw is. Amy Bradshaw? Yeah, we wrote a policy on her a couple years ago. Look, if it's her autograph you want, why send me? It's not that simple. Anyhow, she's got all the fans she wants. I know, I'm one of them. I think she's great. Johnny, looks like somebody's trying to kill her. Georgie, I'll be right over. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Northwestern Indemnity Alliance, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amy Bradshaw matter. Expense account item one, $16.50. Transportation and incidentals to New York City. I checked in at a hotel and then went over to the Criterion Theater on West 44th, where Amy was starring in a play called The Unguarded Hour. David Coleman, the director, was standing in the wings watching the third act on stage. David Coleman? Yes? I'm Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator, sent over by Northwestern Indemnity. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dollar, I called them. Uh, let's go over here where we can talk. Okay. How's the play going? Well, 22 weeks now. I've been going along just fine until this business came up. How did it start? Last evening, just before curtain time, I dropped by Amy's dressing room. She looked, well, strange. How so? Pale, trembling. She was staring at a note in her hand that sounded like some sort of crank note. Do you know, uh, you are an evil woman. You will be punished by sudden death, unquote. Have you reported this to the police? Oh, no. Uh, I was afraid that if I did, it might get into the papers, and we don't want that kind of publicity. I see. How about if I talk to Amy after the show? I told her you'd be down and she'll talk to you. All good. Well... Uh, Mr. Dollar, the strain of this whole thing's beginning to show up in her performance. She's making mistakes and it rattles the cast, especially the young ingenue, Sheila Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do. There's always the possibility that it is just a crank note and that Amy will never hear any more of it. Well, that's what I'm hoping. But we might as well face another possibility, that somebody close to Amy is using the crank note as a cover... Has that thought ever occurred to you? Why, no. No, it hasn't, Mr. Dollar. We will continue with the Bradshaw matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. Now, first you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskey off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now, hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus, guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly-poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, Giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored, preformed, sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost? Just one dollar, not for each. Just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund, but keep the giant talking sat as our gift. 
Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. I waited for Amy Bradshaw in her dressing room at the theater. Fifteen minutes later, after the final curtain, she swept in. Oh, there you are, Mr. Dodd. I'd never seen her from closer than the 15th row before, and needless to say, I was impressed. But I didn't have a chance to say so. I didn't have a chance to say anything. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. If you'll just give me a minute to get some of this makeup off. Now? Now. Hi. Hi. I knew it was only a question of time until you ran down. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I get a little overcharged out on the stage. Sure. Listen, it's nice meeting you, Mr. Dollar, and I know why you've come down here, but I think you're wasting your time. Oh? Yeah. This whole thing's really pretty silly, you know. I hope so, Miss Bradshaw. You mean Amy. Okay, Amy. Say, look, uh, how about having a drink with me somewhere? We can talk about it. Well, I'd love to, but I'm afraid I have a date tonight. Could we make it tomorrow, maybe? Sure, okay, anytime. You... Excuse me. Come in. Oh, Mike. Oh, hello, Amy. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had company. That's all right. This is Johnny Dollar. Johnny, Mike Pomeroy, my agent. Mr. Pomeroy, how are you? What would you think of it tonight, Mike? Well, they seem to like it okay. Oh. Uh, tell you what, Amy, I'll see you tomorrow, eh? Uh, tomorrow, Mike? I've got a few things I've got to take care of tonight. Uh, contracts to go over, you know, th- things like that. I... Oh, of course. Well, glad to meet you, Dollar. Uh, night, Amy. Is that offer of a drink still good, Johnny? Well, sure, but I thought you said you have... Oh, oh, sure, let's go. Thanks for understanding. Anywhere in particular? There's a little place right down the street, small and quiet. Good. Oh. What's the matter? Would you mind if we crossed the stage and went out the other door? Oh, no. Why? I think someone's waiting for me outside this exit. Oh. It's sort of a friend of mine, Porter Kane, but... He can be a little wearing, and I'm rather tired. Sure. I could see him through the open door. A thin-faced, rather elegant-looking man in a black Homburg. We went out the other side and down the street to a bar a few doors away. Item two on expense account, four dollars, drinks. After the first one, Amy relaxed a little. I wanted to get her talking about herself, and it wasn't too tough to do. There's not really much to tell about me. I've been acting a long time. Sometimes it seems too long. I've come a long way. Some people would say up. I hope it is. <laughs> you make it sound pretty simple, Amy. I guess we do what we have to. All of us. I had to act, so. So, just like that, huh? <laughs> just like that. You've always gotten everything you wanted, haven't you? I think so. Hasn't anyone ever gotten in your way? No, Johnny, that's never happened. If it did... It looks to me like somebody's standing in your way right now. What do you mean? That threatening letter you got the other day. I told you. The whole thing's silly. There's nothing to it. Now, that's what you told me, but I don't think you believe it. Okay. So maybe I have worried a little about it. I I wouldn't have if it hadn't been... It was probably only my imagination. What was, Amy? Well, last night after the show, I felt like walking a little... I went west on 44th Street to Times Square, and as usual, it was crowded. I stood on the curb waiting for the light to change, and suddenly I got shoved out into the street. Oh? Right out into the traffic. I jumped back just in time. You see who did it? How can you tell in a crowd like that? I know. It was probably only coincidence that it happened right after I got that note, but... Oh, Johnny, I, I still just can't believe anybody is really trying to do me harm, but... I guess... What's been making me nervous during the performance is staring out at that blackness past the footlights, wondering if there's somebody out there who hates me. Uh Uh-huh. I guess I can't stand being hated, Johnny. I've got to be loved. Look, Amy, did it ever occur to you this might not be a crank out in the audience, that it might be someone closer to you? What? Johnny, that's impossible. Is it? I don't have many friends. They've mostly to do with the play, but those I have are good ones. Who else besides your agent, Pomeroy? How about the director? David Coleman? 
He's a very old friend and one of the best. How about the producer? Emery's the last person in the world who'd wish me harm. On a dollars and cents basis, if nothing else, he and Dora both. Dora? His wife, I like her very much. Does she like you? Why shouldn't she? What about this man you wanted to duck tonight, the one who was waiting outside the theater? Porter Kane. Oh, he's a sort of a fan, I guess. A little eccentric, maybe, but he's been very good to me. Oh, Johnny, really, it couldn't be any of them. Maybe, maybe not. Look, Amy, I was sent down here because Northwestern Indemnity holds a policy on you. I know. Now, who's the beneficiary? William York. Who's he? My husband. You... Oh. I didn't know you were married. We separated six months ago. What I wanted, he didn't. What he wanted, I didn't. It's as simple as that. Well, where is he now? Here in New York somewhere, I guess. I don't know. He's a writer, sort of. Johnny, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, sure you must be. I'm sorry I kept you so long. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. It's been nice. Very nice. It's funny. I seem to relax a little when I'm with you. We let that one lay and went outside. Item three on expense account, two dollars. Taxi to Amy's apartment. There was a car parked two doors down with a man just sitting in it. I saw Amy give it a quick look. Then as she said goodnight to me at the door, I noticed that she slipped the catch on it. I sauntered across the street and stepped into the shadows. A moment later, the door of the parked car opened and her agent, Mike Pomeroy, got out and went into the apartment house. Then I realized I wasn't the only one watching this. Half a block down the street, I could see a figure in a shadowy doorway. I ran toward him, but he took off around the corner. When I reached the corner, he was nowhere in sight. Amy might have been taking this thing only half seriously, but I was real serious about it now. She said she had some very nice friends. But I had a strong hunch that one of these very nice friends was out to kill her. Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar. Some up to three feet tall. You get Bounceo the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa. A roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That's six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily-colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today. You may never hear this offer again. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents for each set with your name and address to Giant Animals, Box 1580, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of the Amy Bradshaw Matter. Tomorrow, the Criterion Theater again, and a third-act curtain that wasn't in the script. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station. For the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.